Good morning, everybody. I'm here to discuss the BK radio with you today. We're gonna do this a little bit differently than we normally do. Uh, we miss having you guys here at the station. We love coming and training with you guys, but uh, in lieu of uh, um, on-site training with all the crews now because of the uh, current uh, virus situation and all our social distancing, along with all the uh, rules and policies that uh, we're set to follow, I wanna make sure that we get you the information that you need in a fashion that's uh, hopefully more easily discussed than the uh, PowerPoint, although it's super thorough, it is uh, sometimes difficult to follow. So if you walk with me, I'll break down the radio for you, I'll break down the comm book for you, and we'll talk about how to build a command channel that you're gonna need on any and every incident. So, let's start with the Radio Basics 101. There's a locking tab here on the side. If you push it up, rotate your radio, your battery pack comes off. If you tap that, there's nine batteries inside. Our recommendation is to change those batteries on every fire that you go on. You're not sure how much was used on the last one. And uh, communications are involved in every sort of radio injury, every fatality, and every misunderstanding. So let's just make sure that our radios work. If we look at the BK radio itself, it's the Bendix King. For those of you that are wondering what BK is, let's look at the very top. This is your power button. If you turn it on, your screen will turn on and you'll hear that sound. If you turn it all the way to the right, your uh, volume will be all the way up. For this demonstration, I'm gonna turn it all the way down so we don't have any unnecessary beeping. This next button right here is your squelch. For us in Orange County, let's not even worry about it. If you turn it on, just make sure it goes all the way to the left till it clicks. Uh, the areas that we fight fire in are so vast that we don't have interference with uh, channels bleeding over onto one another. This happens more in uh, areas where fires are occurring in a closer area. We're not gonna have that bleed over down here, so let's just leave that off. There's three toggles, one, two, three. Now what we wanna do is if you're looking at the radio, you want them to point towards you. If they point towards you, then you can manipulate the radio. If you want some feature on your radio to work, then point it away from you or towards the antenna. It goes up and out of the antenna, away towards your friends and or the repeater to do the function that you'd like. And the last little bit is a knob here. This is your channel selector knob. So as I turn it, you'll see that I can change what frequency I'm on on my radio. Okay. The screen will display the name given to the frequency that you're working with. That's usually how most of us operate. There are numbers associated to that and they're within our book and we'll discuss that shortly. There are the punch pad on your uh, Bendix King and that's how you're gonna work on programming it. We have a fancy label on them. They should be on all your radios and when you check them out, it'll tell you how to input to make your own command channel, how to clear one out. So let's discuss our channels first. In Orange County, we operate on the solar plan. That's San Bernardino, Orange, LA, and Riverside counties. It'll be mostly our 91 corridor, some of the 241. It comes down into all of our canyons and everything that bumps into the Cleveland. Um, in that whole area, we'll be working uh, in there so we have common communications between all the neighboring agencies. We've already pre-programmed that for you in your radio. Now, just know that even though we're in the year 2020, our communications book is from 2019. That will be corrected in the spring and you'll have a new colored book. On the back of your radio, you'll have a sticker that should match the same color as your book. If the sticker on your radio doesn't match the color of your book, then let's work on contacting communications and they can get you the uh, programming that you need or the appropriate uh, comms book. The solar plan that I previously discussed is in group one. The way that you get to your groups is you press the pound, some call it a hashtag, pound one enter. When you do that, you should see CDF command one tone one. If you don't, adjust your channel selector knob and you'll see all the frequencies that are in group one. Every fire that you and I fight in Orange County is gonna have a frequency in group one. If we happen to be fighting fire down south, there's the PROS plan. PROS is Pendleton, Riverside, Orange, and San Diego counties. We've conveniently packaged that for you in pound two enter. So it'll look just a little bit different because there's some San Diego features down there. So these X channels that you're gonna see, 
That's for down south. Okay. The command group that we're gonna discuss and make momentarily is probably already programmed in your radio, but you need it for your fire, not the last fire. So if you press pound, pound, enter, you probably have some frequencies in your radio. If they're in there, just hold the star button down for a long time, it'll say delete all, and then eventually it'll say command empty. If you had your volume on, it would make this annoying sound. Just leave your volume off and we won't have to worry about it. The reason why you build a command group is you're gonna need to run your fire. So the first arriving engine would arrive on scene, provide their size up and uh, ask for the resources that they need. They would be operating off of a command frequency. For us in Orange County, our default button is going to be fire OC. So if I was gonna build my command group, I would press pound one, enter. Within the solar plan, I would scroll my channel selector knob until I find fire OC, and then I would press the star button one time, and when I do that, it says command channel one. We build from left to right, and I'm gonna describe that in just a second. As you build, your first arriving unit is going to use fire OC. That way, they can order for resources, they can tell uh, dispatch what's going on. They could talk to neighbor agencies and everybody can hear the size up. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is send units either down the left or the right flank or send them up to a neighborhood to patrol. So you're gonna need tactical frequencies. We're gonna need at least two because you have two sides of the fire, Alpha and Zulu. Um, they uh, sometimes call them different names, but don't worry about that for now. It's just there's a left flank and there's a right flank. And sometimes in the middle, there's some assets that they want to present, uh, protect, like homes or structures or schools or some sort of building. So they might give you a third tactical channel, but we're just going to deal with the first two. Whoever goes down either side, left or right, whichever side you decide to attack first, is going to need one of those tactical channels. So you can give them a channel, which we like to use in Orange County, is any one of the V fires. 22, we like 24, we like 26. So let's just use 22 for now. If you did that and press the star key one more time, it should say command channel two. Now we have V fire 22 as your first tactical channel. Tactical channels are not repeated. They're direct channels, so only the people on that division will hear them, and then it won't interfere with your IC dealing on fire OC to order more resources and or talk to multiple divisions on your fire. Your next in units will go perhaps down the same uh, fire line, if not another one. So we're gonna use V Fire 24. If you press the star button one more time, should say command channel three, And now they can operate on the other side of the fire. Eventually we'll be tying it all in. Uh, we'll work with aircraft and we'll work with uh, our hand crews um, and the bulldozer whenever they arrive. And uh, we'll work on uh, circling the fire. We'll work on extinguishing the fire. But us working down the fire line, our number one priority is to maintain the perimeter. So don't go fast, do a thorough job. The helicopter puts the water on the fire and extinguishes it, and the bulldozer cuts the line around it. All we do is we make sure that it doesn't spread. So by putting in a nice thorough wet line, by communicating appropriately with the hand crews, if you need to do some extra saw work, or have your type threes come out, and we'll do some work for you too. If you are gonna be operating with the aircraft, then we're gonna need another channel, which we call air to ground. AG, air to ground, just any way for us to talk to our aircraft. If you keep scrolling in your group one, we can get to either LA County's air to ground, we can get to CDF's air to ground. So let's say that we're working with our helicopters as well as some fixed wing coming from uh, either Hemet Ryan or Ramona. So if we wanna add air to ground, then we press the star key one more time. Gets channel four and we're gonna be operating on CDF. And that's the reason why we build our command groups from left to the right. If every time you need to find it, the command is always all the way to the left, and your guard, which for us, think of it as your emergency button on your 800 megahertz, 
uh, we'll want to build that all the way to the right. So if you keep scrolling in group one, eventually you get to this thing called guard. I'm going to turn my volume back on. If I turn past one more, you get this disabled sign. So in the middle of the dark with fire and embers blowing at you, not looking at your radio, you know that if you turn your knob all the way towards your command channel, you'll hear this sound. And if you turn it all the way and hear this disabled sound, one more click back should take you to guard. You can get on the radio, call your mayday. So we need to make sure we add that in at the very end. Press the star button one more time. Should be command channel five. Now let's make sure that we actually appropriated all of our channels in our command channel the way we thought we did. So if you press pound, pound, enter, Again, I'm gonna turn my volume off. Then your command group should be built as such. We put in Fire OC as our command channel. We put in VFire 22 as our first tactical channel. We put in VFire 24 as our second tactical channel. And we put in CDF air to ground for us to talk to the aircraft and our guard so that we could save ourselves um, in case of emergency. The next thing we're going to do is work with these toggles here so that we can make sure that we can hear what we want to hear. I'm a firefighter, so I just go down the line. I cut line, I lay line, I use fusees occasionally, mostly out of county, and we can do all that through communicating on our division according to the needs of our division. So I'm going to pretend that I'm working on V-Fire 22 with you. I'm gonna to wanna to press this priority button. It's PRI on your radio, priority. When you press it, you'll get a PR up here on your radio. It's priority listen. All it does is if anybody talks on a V Fire 22, I'm gonna be able to listen to it on my radio. So I wanna lock that in. And then up here, I'm gonna have a priority button. It's the closest one to your channel selector knob. If it's hard to see in the video, just look at the top of your radio. Press that towards my antenna, so now it goes in the opposite direction. So I can hear any communication that happens on this radio on VFIRE 22. If I wanted to listen to any other channel, and uh, I recommend that for anybody who's uh, paying attention to what's happening in your neighboring divisions, it's um, parts of our 10s and 18s, you want to know what they're doing next to you, you want to know what you're doing, you might want to know what your aircraft is doing. You can hit the scan button. So if I wanted to scan air to ground, it would say SCN over the top. So the first thing in my command group that I know I'm in it is it says command on the screen. And then this SCN button that you'll see is ha gonna happen because I'm gonna press the enter button when I press the enter button, I can scan it. Up on the top, the middle toggle is the scan option. So when I do that, the scan on my screen is now blinking. Let's see if we can do it without the shadows. Now that it's blinking, I'm scanning, but how do I know I'm scanning that and not another channel? When I turn my channel, take my scan selector off, it'll be solid, solid, right? Turn my priority on and my scan on, and it'll scan away. There you go. So if I turn to a channel that I'm not scanning, my scan goes away, I'm on CDF, it scans, I'm on my VFIRE channels, they also scan disappears, but my priority shows up on VFIRE 22, and there's FIRE OC, which I can also be scanning. To me, if you scan too many channels, you get lost in the communication. You might end up communicating on the wrong channel. I turn all of that off. The way that you would take your scan off is you hit the clear button. When you do that, your scan goes away. So I won't scan command. I'll leave that for the captains. I'm gonna priority my VFIRE 22. Um, I might listen to VFIRE 24, but for this demonstration, we're gonna take that off as well. 
the aircraft I don't need to listen to unless they're operating right above me. And then we're done. So as the firefighter, I'm going to take everything off except my priority. Uh, captains or anybody else might listen to other channels. Enter allows you to scan a channel. Clear allows you to clear a channel. I personally like to hold the function key down. When you hold it down, it says hold the star button to lock all. Now I hold the star and it says that everything's locked. Now I can't push a button if it's in my pocket, if it's in my radio pouch, and it won't change any of the channels regardless of what I push. It'll say all locked. You don't have to do that. If you want to take that feature off, hold the scan or the function down again, press the star, it's all unlocked. Okay? We'll get to the book and we'll try to wrap it up in five minutes for you guys, okay? The book works like this. On the back of my book, I've been doing this for the last 13 years here, is I write down page 20, 22, 32, and 66. Uh, we tried to teach this to you guys last year at the uh, uh, big wildland tag that we did, but just a refresher for those of you that haven't seen this or heard this. Page 20 in your book tells you every group up and down the state. So if you look at the pages, solar is going to be group one. Come on, let's focus in. Let's focus in. Okay. Solar is going to be group one. So is pros. That can tell you how to find what channels you might be looking for if you're going up and down the state. Sometimes we um, respond in an initial, uh, an immediate need and you might be going to an area that you respond just to a division, especially if we're going into Corona, uh, if we're going down towards Pendleton. You might not have a base camp to go to where you can clone your radios. You might have to just use the book. So you can see where you're going on page 20. On page 22, it is the group breakdown. So for those of you that are trying to figure it out, the groups are broken down with every channel. These are your receiving frequencies, uh, your transmitting frequencies, it'll display the name that you should see on the screen, and it'll tell you what group and channel that it's in on the page. They're numerically ordered, so if you get a sheet, uh, 205, for those of you that are wondering, uh, when you get to base, there's a communication sheet, it'll give you frequency numbers. If they don't give you a name, you can just scroll down the numerics until you find the number, come across, until you find the name and then figure out which group it's in. You can program your radio. And it does that for all of the 25 groups that are in California, okay? So if you keep scrolling through all the groups and then we get to page 32, I'm sorry. I said 32. I meant to say page 36. I'm reading backwards here. When you get to page 36, it'll break down your groups for you. So page 20 is all the groups up and down the state. Uh, page 22 is where all the numerics start. Page 36 is the actual group. So this is the breakdown of the solar group. Autofocus never works the way you want it to. But it goes through all the groups. So there's solar. If you flip one more page, here's your pros plan, and so on. You can walk, work through all the groups so you can find them easier that way if you know which group you're already looking for and then you're just looking for the channel. The last little bit actually starts in the low 60s with regards to repeaters and tones. Uh, all that you need to know is your command channels on your frequency um, operate on repeaters. So your command channels are meant to talk over vast areas. So sometimes you're not in a line of sight like you would be on your tactical channels. Uh, and if that's the case, then you're going to want to talk to the tops of a mountain. Your radio is going to click the top of the mountain. You'll hear the chirp sound that you're used to hearing when you hear the radio. It's going to go back and talk to the next radio. If that uh, tone is not already pre-programmed for you in the 60s, 
especially on page 66 and 67, you can see all the repeaters up and down the state for you to use, okay? In our program, they've already set that up for you uh, with Fire OC. Uh, for you captains, you're gonna need to play inside your mobile and get in there and uh, figure out how to manipulate your tone so that uh, your mobile radio inside your engines will be able to get you out uh, with your communications so that everybody can hear your size up. If not, step away from your engine, grab your uh, BK radio, and then on your handheld, you can broadcast out. Don't try to broadcast from inside your engine with your BK. It'll just make a mess and nobody will be able to hear you. Um, the uh, last little bit that we want to talk about are traveling around in town. We're going to be operating on five uh, Papa on our 800 radios. Um, in groups three and four, you'll find a channel called Caesars. That'll be your uh, travel frequency up and down the state. Uh, three is going to be a repeated. You don't want to hit the tops of mountains and have everybody in the state hear what we're talking about. Channel uh, group four, pound four, enter. And then if you scroll around, We'll get you to Caesars. There's Caesars. Now Caesars is gonna say 19, and again, that's because we're in the 2019 load. As soon as they put in the 2020 load, your new Caesars will say Caesars 20. Also a way for you to check to see if your radio is current. So let me show that to you again. Caesars 19. This will allow you to communicate up and down the state on a frequency that other agencies aren't gonna be using. So we've gotta be careful uh, in the past, we've used our 800 radios and uh, interfered with other agencies, uh, law enforcement, because uh, we can transmit on a frequency they're listening to, but we can't get their information back, so they can't even tell us that we're using their radios. The, um, that's the down and dirty guys, 20 minutes, BK radio, build a command group, uh, oh, then we'll clear one one more time. Since I think I showed you at the very beginning, somebody always puts in a command group. But just in case you got to get rid of it again, hit pound, pound, enter. That you'll have your command group. If you want to get rid of it, hold the star button down one last time. Delete all. Keep holding. It'll say command empty. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and contact us here at 47s. We hope you guys stay safe. We hope you guys stay uh, following the rules. Let's not get sick. Let's get over this thing. Let's get back to normal. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thanks again. Stay safe out in the wildland. And uh, we'll see you on the next event. Bye-bye.